Hello and welcome. Uh, so, uh, like Christoph said, I'm here to talk about how MIDI's not dead and other musical ways to use JavaScript. Um, so, a little bit more about myself. Uh, uh, that was me at my wedding. My wedding, of course, had a lot of IoT clothing. Uh, I am a developer advocate at Cloudflare. I am an IoT author of two books and a chapter on JavaScript on hardware. So I've been doing this for a while. I'm a self-taught EE major. Uh, I'm agender. I use they, their, them pronouns. I know that's hard in French, and I'm sorry, not sorry. Um, and I am a budding musician. I have, I've been playing the bass for a few months now, and I've, I've played instruments in the past. So I'm going to talk about building a JavaScript band, because that was the thing I set out to do. And I think I did a pretty good job, but we'll see what you think. The first thing is the base. It's been a thing. If you've been near the Cloudflare booth, you might have seen it. Uh, during the breaks, my coworker has been playing it a lot. And it's a lesson in MIDI, music theory, and project complexity. <laughs> so what I wanted was I wanted my base to light up in a way that had something to do with what was being played. So the first thing I did was I cracked open a music theory book because I am a literature nerd. So I wanted to read about it first. And one of the first things that jumped out at me was a circle of notes and how half steps and whole steps are uh, in the scale. And I immediately thought of the hue circle from HSV. So I thought, OK, I've got a relative uh, comparison here. Let's work with that. So what it is, is it lights up rainbow when it's silent, which is right now. And it uses the hue note wheel to light up the color of the note being played when it is actively being played. Now, I thought what it would be would be the, the, uh, rocks, the Rocksmith MIDI cable, and that's it. That's all I thought I needed was Node and that cable. Wow, was I wrong. Uh, <laughs> it turns out that the uh, Rocksmith cable is highly proprietary and does not use MIDI technically, even though it kind of does. It's, it, it's weird. So what I ended up doing was I ended up using what's called an ABY switch. And um, one of the ABY switches goes to the Rocksmith cable because I am using my laptop as an amp. And the other fork is much more interesting. So the other fork goes to a uh, USB MIDI converter made by a company called Sonos. And then that goes to Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it's just 3B plus there, but I had to make a quick upgrade. In fact, I had to make two quick upgrades. My base broke on the way here. So that base is actually from a shop in Paris. <laughs> so, so the USB MIDI converter feeds via USB to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi feeds via USB to a Fade Candy LED manager, which fades digital I.O. to the LED is on the base, which are on the, the, the ring on the front, the square on the front, and there's a strip of lights on the back of the neck. So how it works, like I said, analog sum comes out of the base and into the ABY switch. The one fork goes into the Sonos MIDI converter. The Sonos converter data goes into the node script that determines the hue of the note using the circular diagram that you saw on the previous slide. And the node script tells Fade Candy what color to set the lights. The software that I used was npm install MIDI, tonal, and color. And then I installed the Fade Candy server, which had some node examples, which I used and uh, kind of converted into um, more uh, new JavaScript. Um, MIDI takes the MIDI data from the converter, and tonal takes that MIDI data and tells me what node is being played, because I didn't want to have to do that if I didn't have to, and I didn't. So then I used the color library and the HSV algorithm where they're in to get the color of the note. And then I send OBS data, that should be OBC data, or OPC data, open pixel control data, to the FCC server to light it up. So I'm going to do a short demonstration. I'm going to play a scale. Grab this. It's a lot of wires, but we got it. All right. So. So that's the base. And uh, yeah, you'll see a little more of that in just a few. Um, all right, let's go back to my slides. All right. 
So there's still some limitations for this. Um, the reason, one of the reasons I'm using a bass and not a guitar is I love the bass. The other reason I'm using a bass and not a guitar is the Sonus is monochromatic. So it only detects one note at a time. If you play multiple notes, it kind of tries to average them out as far as I can tell, and that can cause some really weird patterns. So uh, it doesn't do chords. Electrical noise is a thing. <laughs> the first time I did this, the reason the wire is silver is I had to electrically isolate it from the analog signal coming from the guitar, because if it went too close to the input of the guitar, it caused this really bad screeching noise. <laughs> and I'm no professional bassist. I've only been playing for a couple months. So, you know, uh, that's my, uh, my coworker was noodling around with it. And I actually want to like, give him an amp and let him play it because like, he's been playing for a lot longer than I have. And it's amazing watching it. Um, but I think it's fun to watch when I play it too, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. So, the next thing I thought is well, a, a bass doesn't make a band, so I'm going to need other instruments. I'm going to need something to allow these instruments to communicate with each other because band baits need to talk to each other and I can't always yell at robots to tell them what to do. Sometimes they have to tell themselves what to do. So my communication system is actually very simple. I just wanted to bring it up and, and talk about what it is so that it's, so that, that is contextually available. Um, it's using WS for WebSockets. It receives messages from instruments and then broadcasts other messages to all instruments. Uh, I named it Maestro because that made sense to me. <laughs> um, by the way, all this code that I'm talking about and showing is available on GitHub. Uh, I will have a QR code to the GitHub repository on several of the slides and part of the demo. So if you're interested in building building your own, um, all of the code is available. So how it works, takes in messages from connected clients and then broadcasts messages back out to clients. So the controller, because typing and playing the bass don't mix. So the controller I'm using is an Ableton Launchpad V2. It's got all sorts of LEDs and buttons and it's super great, I love it. Um, so what I did was I rigged it to play MP3s on cue. I will give you a hint as to the song I'm gonna play. <laughs> and uh, it also sends messages to the communication system. So when I want to start a song, instead of going over here and typing start song and then grabbing my bass and then playing, I can hit a button on the controller and then play, which is much more, much less stressful. Let's put it that way. Come on. So how it works. Uh, there is an Ableton Mark II library. I forked it because when uh, I used the original, sometimes when I hit a button, it would uh, seg fall out. So I forked it and fixed that and tweaked a couple other things. And I'm trying to put a pull request back into the original. Um, it uses Node MP3 player for MP3 sounds like the, the sound you just heard. And it uses WS to connect to Maestro and send events such as work and <laughs> play song. So the melody and drum player, because a bass does not a band make. So what it is, is it, you, it is Tone.js in the browser. So I'm going to open up a browser tab here when I do my demonstration. And it's a WebSocket connection to Maestro, and it uses the browser WebSocket. So it doesn't use WS in this situation. It has GIFs, because of course it does. And then it plays the melody and the drum parts with a cue on Start Song from Maestro. Come on. It's remote. Ah. Okay, we're gonna play a song. So what I'm gonna do, and that's the QR code for the, the code. So first I'm gonna make sure this works. No, we need to refresh it. Cool, all right. So first I'm gonna put my bass back on. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about how it works. Kind of skip ahead on the slides. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna push a button, this button, and it's gonna start the song for me.
Thank you very much. <sighs> now for that, I get this. Of course that failed. <laughs> But it did work, it just kind of was a little skippy, but you know what, whatever. We'll take it. Because I OT demos and music and all that stuff. All right, so how that worked. I pressed a button and that sent play song to Maestro and Maestro said, great. And it told the browser and it told the bass, hey, start playing. And bass, wait a minute, because you don't need a cue, you need the cue. So the bass waited for, this, for the right number of notes. Uh, the tone started playing immediately because it had that drum beat that was telling me when to start playing. Um, I, for a while, I didn't have that cue, and I would hit the button and then, like immediately try to start playing, and that was, even if that was awesome. <laughs> luckily, I, I added that in there. So the melody player started the cue, following by the song, and I played along, and the lights did their thing, and that's how you got the Chocobo song. Um, yeah. Okay, so what's the point of this? Like, that's cool, you played the Chocobo song, and your bass lights up, but like, what is the point? What is the point of art? What is the point of art and programming? The point of art and programming is to give yourself an outlet that isn't necessarily a life-changing or life-altering uh, problem and, and have fun with it. It's also a great way to augment hobbies that maybe you, you don't code with normally. Um, so that's the point, is art is the point, and music is the point, and having fun is the point. Uh, because I think we forget a lot as developers about having fun. And don't get me wrong, if you have a hobby that's not programming and you don't program, outside, that's also completely legitimate. Um, I think we should just all think a little bit more about having fun and having hobbies, be they robotics or, or programming or not. So, yeah. Another point is Node is 10 years old. I remember when Node happened. I was living with a maintainer at the time, and I remember thinking, no, okay, so it's, so it's JavaScript, but it's not in the browser, so what's the point? Okay, oh, oh, WebSockets are easy. Oh, the, everything's easy. Oh, okay, this all makes sense, like as time went on, as with most of us. Look at what we can do with Node. We can have Raspberry Pi light up guitars. We can have uh, control, we can control basically any USB serial device that's out there. There's probably an NPM library for it. There was an NPM library for the Ableton library. There's a, uh, just about anything you can get your hands on. So look what we can do with Node and look at what we can do with the community and look what we can do with art. It's amazing when you think about it that way. Um, before I get a thanks for listening, I, I say this in almost all of my talks now. If you are a hiring manager in this audience, I have a specific challenge for you. And that is to hire someone different from you. I don't care if it's race, gender, um, sexuality, ideals, something, because tech is not diverse enough. And you know, yell at me all you want about this being off topic, but I don't care. Um, so if you're a hiring manager, I want you to hire someone different from you, and I want you to do it as soon as possible. And I know it's hard, and I don't care. I want you to do it anyway. That's why it's called a challenge. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So if you're interested in the code, that QR code will take you to the GitHub repo. If you also just go to Node Botanist, it's the, like, probably the first or second repo that's up there. Uh, it's called .js 2019. Um, Carl Sagan and I think you're awesome for listening. And uh, I'm going to end it at that. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>